What is up guys? Welcome to So Hills Kids. I hope you're doing great wherever you're at and I hope you had an awesome time with your family. Whether you uh, got some great presents, you spent some time with family, ate some good food, and ultimately remembered Jesus and what he did on the cross for us and what he did coming here lowly and in a manger. So I hope you guys are doing great. If you remember last we left off, we were talking about Pharaoh. You see, we had the inter intermission of talking about Isaiah, but we're talking about Pharaoh now. And we're talking about what he did, right? So he had the, the Israelites, and they were enslaved, and then um, they got away. And we're at this weird point where they're leaving Egypt, but actually Pharaoh changes his mind. It gets ugly. So we're going to check that out. So check out today's Bible story. I hope you guys enjoy it. Moses quickly led God's people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. God guided Moses and the Israelites toward the Red Sea and the wilderness. As they traveled, God went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud during the day. At night, God was a pillar of fire. God told Moses to set up camp near the sea. God knew Pharaoh was going to change his mind and chase after the Israelites, and God had a plan to prove to the Israelites that he is the one true God. Sure enough, Pharaoh got into his chariot, and he and his army pursued the Israelites. They caught up with God's people, who were camping near the sea. The Israelites saw the Egyptians coming, and they were afraid. We're going to die! they shouted. We should have never left Egypt. But Moses said, don't be afraid. God brought you here and he will fight for you. As the Egyptians got closer, God told Moses what to do. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it so the Israelites go through the sea on dry ground. God moved behind the Israelites to hold back the Egyptians for the night. In the morning, Moses stretched out his hand and divided the sea. The Israelites walked through with walls of water on both sides. But the Egyptians chased after them. As soon as the Israelites were safely on the other side of the sea, Moses stretched out his hand again. The waters crashed down, covering the Egyptians and killing all of Pharaoh's army. When the Israelites saw what had happened, they feared God and believed that he had sent Moses to lead them. Moses and the Israelites sang a song to the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my song, they said. He has become my salvation. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt, and God provided a way for them to escape through the Red Sea. The Bible says that Jesus is greater than Moses, Hebrews 3.3. People who trust in Jesus escape the penalty of sin and have eternal life. So, we've got this guy Moses and Israel. And it's crazy, right? You saw the story, how crazy it is, what goes on there, guys. How insane is it? You think about it. Have you ever thought about the force of water? How powerful it is? How powerful it can be? We power cities with water. When we build a dam, we collect the energy the water is pushing out. Or have you ever seen a, a tsunami and the wake of a tsunami and what it's left, the destruction it leaves just by water? Or have you ever thought about the Grand Canyon and how that entire canyon was carved out simply by water flowing? And yet God takes this water and simply moves it aside. You see, we're talking about how God keeps his promises. How God makes a promise and he will always, always, always keep that promise. And today we're talking about the promise because here's the, here's the promise. God told the people of Israel, I will deliver you from Egypt. I will deliver you from Egypt in the hands of Pharaoh, the slavery you've endured, you will be free, and you're going to go to a land that's going to be flowing with milk and honey, if you've ever heard that. It might be a little bit weird, but, you know, back then they didn't have a grocery store to go get milk and honey, and it's actually really, really valuable for them. So, it was pretty much saying, you're going to have some really, really nice land, and I'm going to take you to it. But, the people kind of doubted. 
you see, they got led into this corner. They got kind of trapped, pinched, really, between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea. Now, if we read the story, we actually get to see that it was part of God's plan. God told Moses, hey, go this way, and the Pharaoh will think you're trapped, and he's going to try and come get you, but I will deliver you. And so Moses trusted. But the people freaked out. They're like, oh my goodness, oh, we're going to die. And it's easy to laugh at them or to think, oh, that's so silly. God always provides. But here's the reality. Sometimes we have a hard time trusting God's promise. You see, God will promise us things in our lives. He will give us things in our lives, and we will think that things are going to happen in a certain way. And when they don't happen in the way that we envision, we freak out. We think something's wrong, that we've done something wrong, that God's done something wrong, that something is messed up. But the reality is, God's plan happens in a totally different way than we imagine. You see, God's people may have thought that he would deliver them in a different way. Maybe they thought that God would just smite Egypt and it would be gone off the face of the earth like Sodom and Gomorrah. Maybe they thought something different, but I bet they didn't think, I bet God is going to part this entire sea in front of us. But he did. So the reality is, guys, God loves us and he has a plan for us and he has a promise for us. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, And oh, this is the last lesson of the year. Consider yourself blessed by this. And get ready for next year. It's going to be a more amazing, awesome, action-packed year. And I hope to see you guys here around at Soho Hills Kids or maybe at Soho Hills in person. I'll see you guys.